What's going on, people? Welcome to Fandoms Anonymous. We are here. This is the place for the official Fandoms Anonymous Power Ranger movie countdown. Man, we are so excited to have a Power Rangers movie coming out. We're going to be providing you all types of content from podcasts to special interviews with special guests to different conversations to debates about Power Rangers. We're talking Power Rangers every single day. There's going to be a new video dropping every day leading up to the release of the Power Rangers movie. Again, this is Fandoms Anonymous presents the Power Rangers movie countdown. Follow us all over social media and subscribe to us here on YouTube. Go, go Power Rangers. What's going on, everybody? This is Malcolm, and of course you know who I am. This is Fandoms Anonymous. That's F-A-N-D-O-M-S, A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S. We are continuing our Fandoms Anonymous Presents the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie countdown, or as it is now known, Saban's Power Rangers. This is a very interesting piece of our countdown today. Today is countdown is dedicated to the ladies. So I got two wonderful women on the on the panel with me today. I have Miss Katja. Katja, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hey everybody. Tell everybody where you're coming from. Uh Chicago. Best city. Chicago. Best Windy city. city. I've been to Chicago once when I was in the band in college. It was cold. And I had a bald head. And I didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah, like it. We came and we came and played for the uh, I think it was the Circle City Classic back in 2009. So if oh, anybody okay. seen Bernie, yeah, if anybody seen Bernie Sands, you'll know why I had a bald head. But that I digress. <laughs> so I'm gonna head, head it over and pass it on to Miss Omiyona. Omiyona, how are you doing today? Hello, hello. Tell us where we tell everybody where you are calling from today. I'm calling from Indianapolis, and you can just call me Anna for short, but it's Amiana Brown on Anna. Facebook. Yeah, everybody's calling me awesome, Anna. Awesome, awesome. And we we drove through there because I think it was a McDonald's in the middle of the highway. Um, I'd never seen that before. <laughs> I never. I was. I would hate to be driving the highway. Like, hmm, I'm hungry, and call the twelve car wreck just to get to McDonald's. I don't think that would be cool. <laughs> but again, I digress. We're going to move on to some awesome topics that they have brought to us. And we're talking, of course, we're talking about Power Rangers, but we're specifically talking about the ladies today. I adore the ladies of Power Rangers. You don't find too many actual real-deal Power Ranger fans that are women that can say, I know a lot about all of the seasons, and not just say, oh, yeah, I know Kimberly. No, no, sweetie, that's not enough. That's, everybody knows Kimberly. So <laughs> we're going to jump right into these topics. The first one one I want to jump into is our heavy topic, American Rangers versus Sentai. So uh, what do you guys think about that right there? Um, okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I haven't watched too many of the Sentai version of Power Rangers. And just briefly for anybody who is like, what is Sentai? Sentai would be the originator of Power Rangers. It's the Japanese version. It's where Power Rangers, that, as we know it, that's what they're based off of. Um, I've only been able to watch a couple of seasons all the way through. There are a couple of other seasons that I you know, have on standby that I'm interested in. Um, but for me, the, the Sentai version kind of goes a little bit more all out, like full speed. Um, it's either going to be like super, super campy or it's going to be like really – uh, deep and maybe a little bit more adult. Um, I feel like the American version is sometimes a little bit watered down. There are a couple of seasons where they went a little bit deeper, but for the most part, it's. I think, uh, especially nowadays, it's definitely more for the kids. So for me, that's the big standout between the two. Most definitely. Most definitely. What about you? Um, I have not watched any full cool seasons of Sentai. I caught a few of the movies on YouTube, but mm-hmm. reading the subtitles gives me a headache. <laughs> so <laughs> most the, even yeah. the movies I watch, I kind of give up on the subtitles and just kind of watch the screen and figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I, I, and I, I have that problem as well. I'm a big Digimon fan, and I've been watching, grudgingly watching the Digimon Tri-Series, and it's like I'm following it. 
you know, and you know, and when you watch Sentai, it's like they, they're so excited. And it's like uh, they take one word and it's like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. about to fight. <laughs> we're about to get it's about to get down. So one word equals on a long to, paragraph. One word equals a very long paragraph. And you got to right. follow it along like you're continuing to click A in the video game so the paragraph can keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's, yeah. let's move on to something else that might be a little bit more lighthearted. The Disney era. The good, the bad, and the ugly about the Disney era. Mm, mm, mm. Now, I am a real Power Rangers fan, and I can judge and criticize Power Rangers where it needs to be judged and criticized. But at the end of the day, I have never missed a season. I've never missed an episode. I'm not caught up on Ninja Steel because of my current work status that I work on Saturdays. But that's neither here nor there. So what do you guys think about the Disney era? Kyle, I'm going to start with you. I I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. I, I liked the Disney era. I thought it was some good seasons. Hey, I'm with there. you. Um, I mean, some of my favorite seasons actually came from the Disney area. Uh, I don't know. I think – I don't know if it's the the fact that it was Disney that maybe it, it gets, like, a lot of flack, and so some people just didn't want to give it the time of day or maybe some things that have happened with certain actors from that era – that we will mm. not talk about on this podcast. Nope. So that might upset some people, and maybe that's why it gets a lot of flack. But I I thought some of those seasons were actually really good and well-developed, you know. And, I mean, I I, I liked it. So What would you say is your favorite Disney season? Ooh. Um, probably going to be Jungle Fury. And I'm hmm. probably going to okay. get heat for that, too, because that's one of the ones people don't like. I like that, too. Yeah, a lot of people don't I, like Jungle Fury because yeah. of the, I have the, I, suit, the sunglass morphers. Yeah. Well, you have the Jungle I, Fury suit. Wow. I have the suit. I have the yellow ring. I have the regular one and the Master Mode suit. Like, I have the full set. Yes. Oh, oh, I love that Master Mode. I love that yeah. Master Mode. I Nothing like it. jets coming out of your area where your kitten's supposed to be. Right, but, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... So, uh, Anna, what about you with the Disney era? Um, there are both good and bad parts to me personally. Um, what I appreciate most about what Disney did, they did, they had a lot of control and made a lot of changes, but I do appreciate the quality and the money that they put into Power Rangers because it just mm-hmm. wasn't there before. And it looks so much better. Um, and also, my favorite season from that era is Jungle Fury. Love it. What? And to me, that, yeah. those are the most, out of every um, Power Rangers suit, to me, that's the most actually fashionable. Like, that's the one that I could just wear somewhere, and you wouldn't even know I was having a Power Ranger costume on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I like, the, I like the look of it. Mm-hmm. Especially, the funny thing is, there are some really expensive shoes out, um, Mason Margiela's, that are the Jungle Fury boots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and people are paying a lot of money for them. I was like, those are Power Rangers Jungle Fury shoes. Are you serious? <laughs> I, need, I need to see those. I need to see those. Yes. If you guys, you know what those are, please drop a, a, a picture or something in the comments so we can see those shoes. I think I'm going to go look those up, and I may or may not buy them. Uh, <laughs> for me, <laughs> my favorite season out of the Disney era, I will say Jungle Fury was good, but it did not have anything on RPM. RPM mm. was one of the most deepest seasons. Even though Power Rangers is a lighthearted kid show, mm-hmm. for some unknown reason, nobody really paid attention to the fact that humans have been driven out of existence by machines. Right. Somehow right. that got that that dropped from everybody's mindset, and it even dropped from minds for a moment because the season was so good. But a lot of people don't realize how deep and dark that was. You mean to tell me that we had to build a dome just to get away from machines because we could not live on regular land and earth because it was toxic? A lot of mm-hmm. people missed that. <laughs> a lot of people missed yeah. that. Yeah. What do you guys think about RPO? That was that was a good season. It was pretty dark. I I like the overall premise. I. <laughs> Dr. K annoyed me so much, though. I liked it better before, like, they were, I didn't like how they built her character. I'll put mm. it that way. I think 
they had like so much to work with and they were doing right. so well. Like everything was pretty deep with everybody. You know, they were doing everybody's backstory, like how did you end up in the Dome City, what was going on in your life and how that was like drastically changed, you know, and your outlook mm-hmm. and everything like that. And then for her it was just kind of like I was a kid who was locked up and I made a mistake and like there's just like no real consequences for her with wow. it. She's just kind of one thing I was like I made this bad one thing mistake, I was, go ahead. to make superheroes to fix my mistake. Like I just she annoyed me. I didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I will say about Doctor K though is she gave us our first scientific definition of what the morphing grid was on a from a biological standpoint. You know, yeah. we got it got deep into what the morphing grid really is. And mm-hmm. from what we're seeing from this movie, the morph we're gonna get a lot deeper into the morphing grid from the where they're using the universe right now. I will say RPM spun off two people who are very famous right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Rose McIver who is uh stars in I Zombie on the CW, and we got Eckhart Darville who has a, a on and off again role on um, Empire, and who's starring now in the Jessica Jones Marvel Netflix series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know they they spun up two, two good two good people, and more than likely it was because of the way RPM was, of you know the mm-hmm. background and everything in regards to that. So let's move yeah, on to I another actually, topic. I want, go ahead. I, was, I, was, I actually loved RPM. Um, in 2015, mm-hmm. I decided to take time to rewatch every season in order to get a um, just gain a new perspective as an adult. Because a lot of mm-hmm. the deeper seasons, I kind of dismissed, lost interest, and actually stopped watching the season because I was younger. So, you know, right. in my 30s, decided to go ahead and revisit. And the three seasons that that were the comeback kids that really stood out to me the most was RPM, SPD, and then Time Force became my favorite, which I ignored it at first. Right. I can't say the same for me. I never stopped watching. <laughs> I never stopped well, watching. I, <laughs> I mean, RPM was kind of, I mean, because what was, it's just still a little bit of a disconnect, but for the plot, for the most part, it seemed to become Resident Evil, take out zombies yeah. and place robots. Exactly. Even with the little girl, Dr. K being the the, the computer, <laughs> the little girl. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. But um, what was always the disconnect to me is the relation to what animals, the Zords were, to anything else in the plot. I couldn't connect. Yeah, that was a whole Dr. K situation. She was a child, so we had a, a berry-looking Zord. Uh, uh, but thank you, Japan, because if we was <laughs> Sentai, we wouldn't have it. RPM in the first place. Right. Mm-hmm. But and also, the ahead. Silver and Gold yeah. Rangers with the completing the sentences annoyed me. <laughs> yes. Jim and Jim. Jim and Jim. And Jim. Mm-hmm. Jim and Jim. <laughs> but the suits were fierce. So. Oh, love them. Yeah, the suits were nice. Oh, the suits were suits fierce. Were nice. so. Mm-hmm. so let's jump on to a heavy, a heavy topic. And I'm, I'm going to switch it up real quick. We'll switch it up. I'm going to go with the opposite of what y'all think. Let's go with the worst female ranger. Now, this is about to get heavy. I really want to hear this. Who is your worst female ranger? Mm. I'm, I'm going to start with Anna. Um, And we're talking about acting or plot? We're talking about overall. Um. Plot-wise, I think I'm going to say Pink SPD. She was just whiny a lot. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that, that kind of turned me off of her. Um, yeah, and acting, I loved her costume. One of my favorite costumes was White Wild Force. Oh, my God, her acting. Mm-mm-mm. Apparently, she has to go, everybody. Apparently, she has to go. <laughs> Kaja, what about you with your worst female ranger? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, you know how everybody likes Kimberly? Um, uh oh. Uh oh. I know, I know, but hear me out. Oh. She was fine. Like season one. Yes, she was. Um, the next season. But toward the end, before she left, 
and then Catherine as, you know, Mighty Morphin Pink when she first started out, that conglomerate of how they had the Pink Ranger, I do not like. Because all of a sudden, mm. she became helpless. She was fine in the beginning, you know, working out some really? kinks, but she could hold her own. And then all of a sudden it was, well, I need Tommy. I need the Green Ranger. Oh, no, God, I've been kidnapped again. Oh, someone, <laughs> please help me. Oh, I can't figure this out. I can't fight a putty on my own. Let me hurry up and morph. Oh, my God, somebody stole my morpher. Like, it's just, you know, it's very, you know, someone save me, like, syndrome. And I just I just feel like it did damage to the, you know, the aspect of, like, the female in that role because, you know, the Yellow Ranger was female, yes, but they made her very tomboyish, you know, very a little bit more rugged, you know, can hold her own and everything. But the Pink Ranger was supposed to be, like, this very feminine and pretty, light, airy, and but she can't do anything. Like, that's that's all she's good for. That I didn't, I didn't like. That, so I don't hate Kimberly. I just hate what they did to her. She just became helpless and, and for you, some reason. And you, you said, at that time, you she said something. You said something real valid. You said that the Yellow Ranger always comes off as type of tomboy. It's like she's a right. little bit stronger. She's a little bit bolder. What do you guys think about that, how they do that with Yellow Ranger? If you look at it from, like, a Sentai standpoint, they're doing it because technically the Yellow Ranger is supposed to be a boy, you know. Uh-huh. Um, if you look at it strictly from an American standpoint, like, we're going to make this an American show, um, I think it's a little bit. I don't know. It's like a little. It's like as a as a female, you have to choose. You're either going to be strong, and you're going to be a tomboy who like wears pants, is a little rough around the edges, not very attractive, or you're right. going to be super feminine and pink and wear skirts and girly and go shopping, but you can't really do much else except you know kind of stand there and look good. Like, why do I have to choose? It's one of the. Like, I know the the Disney era, they they started to kind of, like, meld the two together. You didn't really, you only had maybe one female on a team. But she was feminine. She was pretty. And she kicked butt and held her own. You know what I mean? And you, just, you really didn't have that in the beginning. And, it's just, you know, when you're a kid, you probably don't think about it. But as an adult, you're like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little insulted. That, well, I can't wear a skirt and kick butt at the same time. i got to pick one. Like, I don't. You know, it's just, I don't like that separation. They they seem to be maybe moving away from it now, but, you know. I also didn't like um, Catherine's forced romance with Tommy. That was a little ridiculous. Fair force. Fair <laughs> force. Awkward, even. <laughs> yeah. I was like, your ex, your ex is gone. Now it's up to me, you know. It was one of those type of situations. Yeah. But and then but they made her helpless. Like especially that's like and the and, and here's here's a great point. They didn't make Tommy helpless after he became good. He was evil yeah. and when he became good it's like, oh man. But he wasn't helpless afterwards. So why after Catherine was evil, why is she became good, why is she suddenly helpless? Why? That's true. Like, why are they dumbing her down? The only difference is one's male and one's female. Speaking of Tommy, if you guys haven't already, we did. I did an interview with on the Family Anonymous YouTube channel with the man himself, Jason David Frank. You guys yeah. know who he is. He is the mm-hmm. one and only, the Green Ranger, the White Ranger, the Red Turbo, Red, Red Zio, the Black Donald Thunder Ranger. Man, that was one of the most awesome interviews that I've ever done in my existence of working on social media sites with Fandoms Anonymous. Um, It was a very powerful interview. We talked about everything else except for Power Rangers until Mm -hmm. we got to the end. So it's a very deep, and it's very inspirational. You could have really put a a green robe on them and put them in the pulpit, and what he said could have preached. 
So if you guys haven't checked that out already, go to the Power Rangers playlist on the Families Anonymous YouTube channel and check out that interview. But we're going to move to another topic. And, and a lot of these topics, and, and when I do podcasts, and especially, you know, with the big Power Rangers type going on, I like to be able to employ people to talk about what they want to talk about. Uh, it gives them the option to come on a podcast if they've never been on before. And it also gives them the option to feel comfortable with what they're talking about because they came up with it. So, like I said, these ladies gave me a very extensive list with some very good topics, and we're going to get to some of the more serious things. Let's talk about the lack of racial diversity in the series. Now, with us all being African American here on this podcast, one thing that we've always wanted to see is we want to see ourselves represented in some type of way in all of the things that we watch, whether it be cartoons, whether it be Power Rangers, whether it be Marvel or DC, no matter what. We want to see ourselves represented in some type of form or fashion because one day we're going to have children and we want to be able to show them these type of things and they're going to want to see themselves represented in some type of way. Right. I believe right. Power Rangers is moving towards that. Of course, we if you guys just know, we got our very first ever pink African American female ranger right. who held mm-hmm. her own throughout the entire season, who didn't need help. She was not helpless. She didn't she, none of that. None of that. And she got her boo thing at the end. So <laughs> What do you guys think about the the lack of racial diversity in the series when it comes to Rangers? Well, I know um, in the beginning, and I'm going to try not to age myself too much here, but uh, I do remember back in the day when uh, Mighty Morphin started, it was actually a pretty big thing. Why is the Black Ranger black? Why is the Yellow Ranger yellow? You know. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, even my adult family members were were bringing it up at the time. Like, why is a black ranger got to be black? Like, why can't a black ranger be red? You know, so. um, And if you go go say it, you got to say it like my mama used to say it. Why the black ranger got to be black? My mama hush. Power rangers Rangers is on. Mama, you got to be quiet. Hold on now. I ain't telling that for real because I'll probably be dead. But (laughs) hold on, mama. What is she she doing, mama? Hold on. You know, but I think it was, you know, it's kind of a sign of the times, you know, the 90s uh, yeah. was really kind of like, you know, you always had your, you had your token black eye, you had your, your, you know, background Asian, you had your, you know, sprinkle of females, mostly blonde hair, blue eyes, and then you have like your three guys. Mm-hmm. Like that was just kind of like the makeup of any kind of quote unquote diverse group. Like it's, it's, it's always what it was. You had one minority, you had one, maybe two minorities. Most of them are going to be male, and then two female. Like, that was just kind of the makeup, you know. Um, so in that sense, you know, I guess Power Rangers gave it a good old college try. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't think we didn't have, like, a person of color who was a leader until SPD, I think. What is nope, that? Nope, nope, got to go like, back. Got to go back. And uh, what a lot of people more. skip over. That what a lot of people skip over, and it was something that uh, Black Nerd, Andre Meadows, pointed out. Shout out to Black Nerd. Okay. Uh, he did a video a long time ago uh, with Selwyn Ward. If you guys don't know who Selwyn Ward yep, is, Selwyn that's Ward right. is TJ, mm-hmm. the My first African American Red was Ranger. He was. And he had a, he had a whole song. He was given. He had a yeah. He had a whole song like Selwyn Ward, first black leader of the Power Rangers. <laughs> you know, Selwyn Ward was the first. So, but he came in because a lot of the first season it was turbo halfway, and then he was there for like what? Literally, it was probably maybe one season, maybe a half of one, and then he got demoted. Basically, <laughs> he was demoted. Got demoted back down the blue. Right. You know, like and, it was like, and that's something. And then, and then, and then that, and then that series was like that's Turbo is a series that that almost destroyed Power Rangers because we had to, Boy. we had to bring it back within space, and then they were gonna cancel the show because it was that bad. And you know, like who wants to, who wants to be like, you know, be like, yeah, that's my claim to legacy. I was the leader for the series that almost destroyed the, yeah, the show. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, so that's probably one of the reasons why people don't 
remember him in that role. It, it, it wasn't very right. it was wasn't in that role very long. But you're right, he was. Um, but you know, I want I want something of I want a little bit more substance. Substance, you know, I want a little bit more meat and potatoes when it comes to my racial diversity and who gets to be the leader and who doesn't. You know, and twenty plus years of Power Rangers, you can count on one hand how many times a person of color has actually been the lead. Mm-hmm. We did get black. another African American lead. Person of color. I'm just going to blanket it with person of color. So yeah, we'll melted. we'll do person of color. And, and, if, and if we go person, if we go <laughs> person of color for a lead role, I think the next time that we got a person of color for a lead as a Red Ranger uh, was Ninja Storm. Right. Mm-hmm. That was Ninja Storm mm-hmm. because but, uh, I cannot pronounce his last name, but his first name is Pure. Right. And uh, I think I think his last name is Magaviza, but he's um, he's from over in the Hawaiian Islands. I think he's, he's mm-hmm. either a Filip- Filipino or he's from over somewhere in the Hawaiian Islands. So that was the next time we got a person of color. But the synonymous of the first Black Red Ranger goes to the Black Red Ranger from SPD. Like I said, TJ was kind of forgotten based on how short he was in his role. But sometimes what's synonymous with the first Black Red Ranger is the SPD Ranger, and he did an amazing job. That was the first time we had a black black guy that was a Red Ranger that had dread. So right. that was you but know that was it, something yeah. that everybody was synonymous about. I loved his character, and I love how he actually hated being a Power Ranger. Didn't want it <laughs> at all. <laughs> Didn't want it. Didn't want it at all. First chance he got, he gave it up. It was like, look, I'm through with this. I'm done. I'm done with this job. I, I want to go do something else with my life. Uh, but what else do you guys feel about the lack of racial diversity when it comes to race? I don't know. I don't know if I can really say it's a lack. I, I think they include, or they just they just include in the same type of role over and over, and mm-hmm. or the, they are assigned the same colors, particularly with the women. Most of them have been assigned yellow until Shelby, which ended up being one of my favorites. But um, yeah. Yeah, the, the whole black girl has to be yellow thing got really redundant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, it goes into the well, you're really the, the masculine tomboy thing that they think of when they think of black women. That black women mm-hmm. can't be pretty, right. can't be feminine. Um, I'm a strong then, black woman. That's, that's my fit. And see, I have a problem on social media with um, tagging and add, adding um, Saban like I'm really talking to them. So I complained for so many years about there never being a African American Pink Ranger, and I feel like they was listening. I feel like they they I believe so. Pretty believe much her. casted her to almost even just look like me, just so I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I really believe that. I believe that. I'm gonna stick with that. <laughs> but let's let's go off into another topic here, and uh, this is a, a more of a lighthearted topic. What is your favorite season, and what is your worst season, and why? Well, my favorite season is Time Force. Um, mm-hmm. Love the, the 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 plot. Um, love the love triangle, even though it was oddly with the same person, kind of. In um, kind of sort of. <laughs> yeah. Well, or 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 him and his great great grandfather, some kind of yeah, some yeah, something a little weird in there. Um, I. I think it had great character development with the exception of maybe the Blue Ranger. He was just kind of there. driving cars and stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I really, really loved Time Force. I really did overall as an adult. Like I said, it was one of the ones that I definitely skipped at a younger age. But as an adult, mm-hmm. it definitely held its own least favorite. You see, the thing about it, about picking favorites and least favorites is the reason why I picked Operation Overdrive as my least favorite is mainly because it's more forgetful. I think there were worse seasons than Operation Overdrive, but um, a term that, that people say a lot, the shade is in the omission. Like when I think of the whole lineage of Power Rangers, I can kind of forget Operation Overdrive even happened. With the exception of the one to raise episode. There we go. You go. You about to jump in the boat, the same boat I was in. That once a ranger two parter. 
was one of mm-hmm. the five episodes of Power Rangers. It goes right up there with me with Forever Red. That was a ranger because we brought back Alpha 5. Then Alpha 5 went into the morphing grid, so we got more morphing grid history. But, and you know, and then we got the, the return of something from back in the day because it was an anniversary season. And people, if a lot of people mm-hmm. didn't know that it was it was an anniversary season. We got Laura Zed and Rita's son, Thrax. So that was something that was interesting as well. Uh, now there's a lot of plot holes and continuity with that, but that's what we got, and it was kind of cool because he had Laura Zed's staff. So uh, we're not gonna stick on that, so we can see why Operation Overdrive was more forgettable. So Conjure, for you, what is your favorite and worst season, and why? Uh. My favorite season is going to be In Space. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like In Space had the most continuity. I feel like it really finished all of its uh, storylines mm-hmm. by the end of the series. Um, I think it minimized plot holes. You know, um, mm-hmm. there was, you know, there's almost like something for everybody, something for the adult something for the kids. You know, it was all there. It was inclusive. Um, and so there are a couple of episodes in there that you really didn't need to watch. <laughs> but I feel like that was a complete series, you know. Uh, what's going on with Zordon, what happened with Zordon, it's, you know, um, if that really was going to be how Power Rangers was going to go out, I think they did a really good job. Like, you can, exactly. it's a season you can watch and be satisfied and be like, okay, I'm satisfied. And if you want to watch, you know, the rest of Power Rangers, you can. But I think that would be, you know, like a good kind of quote-unquote end point. Mm-hmm. Um, worst season? Worst. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go acting-wise, I'm going to say Wild Force. I, just, I can't. I just, mm-hmm. I just can't. I'm a touch. Like, I'm a touch when on that, that real quick. I feel like I could see the script in their eyes that they're reading off of. Like I just, I can't. Hmm. It's I'm a really touch on that real quick because I I watched Forever Red last night and, and, and see, Cole the Forever Red. Forever Red cannot save that series. Okay, it cannot. <laughs> no. Everybody needs to let it go. Forever Red was. It seems. Episode. I'm gonna say Seems it. like the Forever worst Red seasons have the best reunion episodes. <laughs> the only exactly. reason why everybody's like Forever Red is so awesome is because all the other Rangers were in it. This is the only reason. Plot wise, it didn't even make sense. But people liked it because all the other Rangers were there. Of course. It's completely. It's, com- it's a standalone. It's like a. Stand- it's like it should have been just a regular TV special. But that alone cannot save that series. That series was booty. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Wild Force because, like you said, you can see the script in their eyes. And when you would see the guy who's playing Cold, which he's a part of some things that we're not going to talk about on this podcast. No. But um, mm-hmm. I digress. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that, that's what happens when he got connected so much to that sword playing Decker. Uh, you know, Uramasa. Uramasa he was better as Decker than he was as Carl Evans. There you go. Romasa affected him in real life. Somebody must have tried to touch Romasa, and uh, you know somebody got killed by Romasa. So, we're not but he was actually better as, as as Decker than he was as Cole Evans. He was very he was very good at Decker. And and speaking of Red Rangers, we had an awesome conversation last night called "The Importance of a Red Ranger." So, check that out. That's on the Phantoms Anonymous YouTube channel as well. All the part of the countdown. But like you said, you can see the acting in their eyes. You can see the script in their eyes. And when I watch Wild Force, we are Red Rangers, and we're here to protect the world. And if there's anything that I need to do, I will do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm watching this as an adult, and that was too extra. But as a kid, I was like, yes, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> right. But, it, you know, Wild Force, yeah. No. But I'm not going. I'm not going to give my favorite and worst season. No matter of fact, I am. But I'm not going to elaborate on them too much. Um, mm-hmm. My favorite season is Ninja Storm. Ninja Storm for me felt like one of the most grounded seasons 
in my history of Power Rangers. Of course, I love the original. I love the stuff afterwards and in between. But Ninja Storm, for me, was a great season. If I had to do a worse season, it would be Megaforce. Just point blank here, Megaforce. And the reason for me not liking Megaforce is because of Troy. So um, that's, like I said, I'm not going to elaborate because I can talk all day. And it's not, this podcast is not about me. <laughs> but I'm just going to, Megaforce is there. And the reason because it's Troy. And we talked about Troy really bad last night.